All right. Hi guys. So I wanted to make a video about books because I'd say this is the first time in my adult life where I have been reading a lot more than usual and also really enjoying it primarily because I am definitely picking the right books that are enjoyable for me and I am definitely a completionist type of person where once I start a book, I really want to finish it. So even if I do find myself not enjoying it as much as other books, I'm really compelled to finish it. But that really depends on how large the book is. If the book is like 350 to 400 pages, I may finish it. If it's like a thousand, most likely not. But anyways, I wanted to talk about them a bit and also show off my bookcase. Okay, so this is the first time I have ever bought a bookcase. So whenever I first think about getting something, I have grand thoughts where I want something really nice, good quality. Maybe I don't think about cost as much because I just want something nice. But then, you know, as you think about it a little more, furniture is very expensive. So this is just a simple IKEA bookcase, but one of the primary Features that I found very important is it cannot be open because I have a kitten and he still fucks with stuff and I do not want my books to be at risk of that. It would make me anxious. It would stress me out. It would also piss me off if I come home and see that he has messed with anything in here. So I have books on display on the top row. So whenever I finish a book that I really, really love, it doesn't feel right to just put it in the mix with the rest of the stuff. So I wanted to make sure I had a good way to display the ones that are my latest favorites, basically. Okay, so let's talk about the books on the first row first. But this is the most special book, I would say, for me because it is the book that got me really excited about reading. I would say that this is the first book I've ever read as an adult that I really loved and felt really moved by. And that sounds kind of crazy because I read this book when I was 30 years old, but I'd say for the longest time during my adult life, um, reading was something where I liked the thought of having that as a regular hobby of mine, but for some reason, every time I would read, I would feel like I was forcing myself to do it. It just wouldn't come as naturally. Of course, once in a while I would read books here and there, but it was not consistent. Whereas now, pretty much I always have an active book that I'm reading and then whenever I'm done, I always just buy the next book that I want to read. I do like the thought of having a collection, so actually if I keep only four books on the first row, I'm definitely going to run out of space very soon. But anyways, this book, I happened upon it randomly at Barnes & Noble. I don't remember why I was there because at the time, I don't think I was like specifically there because I wanted to get into reading and I like right now, um, I feel like going to Barnes & Noble is something that I do in between books just to see because I don't always want to buy books online. I know that the price difference is pretty sizable at times. Like I think on Amazon, you can get a book for $5 cheaper, maybe compared to going to Barnes and Noble, but I have just gotten lucky. I'd say with some of the books that I've gotten from Barnes and Noble, like when I see a cover and it intrigues me, I'll buy it. Whereas I'm not easily able to do that when you're browsing Amazon. Like I don't like the experience of browsing Amazon for a book that I don't know if I might like. Um, having the physical book in your hand, I think, makes a big difference. But anyways, I saw this book on the shelf and I went online to look it up, read some reviews, and people were not very positive about it, saying that it was actually like a homosexual love story. And I was kind of surprised by that because I haven't, I don't think I have, read a, a novel that's centered on a homosexual love story, but the book still intrigued me and she won the uh, winner of the Orange Prize for Fiction. And I was just thinking, you won't win that if the book is shit. And plus, 
I kind of want to view it similar as I do for movies now. I don't trust reviews because everyone likes things differently. You have to experience it first before you can properly judge it. So I decided to buy it. I loved this book. It made me cry so hard. And it's a mythological fiction. And um, I was more intrigued by it also because lately um, I was playing Hades. So this is actually a game I was playing like maybe a year and a half ago. But up until then, I had only been playing, you know, multiplayer games by Blizzard or Dota. <laughs> so I was never branching off into independent developers. So when someone recommended me Hades and I played it and I had so much fun with it. So Hades is just full of the Greek gods and having that story interwoven with the amazing gameplay of that was really cool and I enjoyed learning about it. So I just started getting into mythological fiction. So after this book, um, this book actually came out, I believe in 2014, so it had been a while. And um, I would say this book is always gonna stay on display. I love it that much. Her other book, Circe, is also fantastic. So Circe is a witch and um, she had a very, very small part in the Odyssey as part of Odysseus's journey back home. But the author was just saying that she felt like Cersei had a much more interesting story and she wanted to build on that instead of just like the tiny excerpt that she had in the Odyssey. So this book did start off slow, but ultimately it turned out to be a fantastic book. I would also say that a primary focus for me lately is definitely reading books with female protagonists. That is a big interest for me. And of course, when the character is fierce, confident, daring, and not caring about what other people think of them, all of those traits that I really admire, it makes the book that much more interesting. Okay, so where the crawdads sing, I guess I am somewhat on the fence on whether I want to keep it on display. Surprisingly, sometimes I'm not sure how I feel about this book. There are certain aspects of it that definitely resonate with me, but I think long term, in terms of impact and my attachment to it, it's nowhere near the same as Song of Achilles and Circe. Um, I'd say the main reason that I put it on display is because I read it really fast. I read it in like a day or two, um, and I was just very curious to know what happened. And there's definitely certain aspects of the story that I really enjoyed, and I do think she wrote it well. Um, but in terms of lasting impact, I think that matters a lot to me. It's kind of like movies, right? If a movie is good, but after I'm done watching it, I never think about it again, that doesn't mean as much to me. So books are exactly the same thing. And actually, this was made into a movie that came out this year. As with most movies adapted from books, I didn't really have high hopes, but I did end up enjoying it. They actually did a pretty decent job. And then last one up here is Station Eleven, which this one turned out to be a surprise for me because I bought it when I went to Barnes & Noble. I got like four books at once during that trip. This was one of them. As I kept reading, I kept putting this one aside because I knew nothing about it. The plot on the back of the book didn't like reach out and grab me very easily. So I kept putting it off, putting it off. And eventually when I did get to reading it, I was very impressed with it. Um, this is the type of book where it's like Crash, where there's a bunch of different characters and their lives intertwine with each other. This book also has a post-apocalyptic storyline to it for I guess half the book because it jumps back and forth in timelines. I think she is a fantastic writer. This did get made into a series on HBO Max, but I watched the first episode and decided I didn't want to continue watching because I wasn't impressed with the first episode and also I just didn't want to taint my experience of reading this book, watching an adaptation that I didn't feel was good enough. Alrighty, so here on the second row, I have all of my Dota plushies, but we also have Kenny Powers from Eastbound and Down, played by Danny McBride, all the way over there on his jet ski. I guess, let me <laughs> move them out of the way so people can see book titles and whatnot. I pretty much have a mixture where 
I do like to read autobiographies. So sometimes when I guess a celebrity that I'm intrigued with comes out with their book, I'm always curious to learn more about them, their backstory, their experiences, because it just humanizes them a lot. Sometimes when we see someone with fame and money, we make all these assumptions about them, that they had it easy, that they are not hard workers, that everything was handed to them, but that's not exactly the way it works. So I'm just gonna pick a few out of here, I guess that I feel, but um, actually, oh wow, these are pretty tight. <laughs> but um, here I have Victoria, Queen Victoria that I read about to learn more about her. I have David Grand, Killers of the Flower Moon. This I actually read um, many, many years ago. And this I am very much looking forward to. Martin Scorsese is making this into a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. So hopefully they make it very well. And um, yeah, I think it's coming out soon, in a year or two perhaps. Here I have a book about Mad Max Fury Road. It's called Blood, Sweat, and Chrome, The Wild and True Story of Mad Max Fury Road by Kyle Buchanan. So this was one of those movies where it is so powerful. The first time I watched it, I was like, holy shit, what an experience. It also made me feel like what an incredible opportunity it would be to work behind the scenes in a movie like that because it was all, for the most part, practical stunts. So if you have not seen Mad Max Fury Road, I highly recommend it. It is an amazing action film. So, so good. So we have Unstoppable by Maria Sharapova, um, Becoming with Michelle Obama, The House with the Golden Door. So where is my other one? These two are part of a series. <laughs> Let me stick my face in here. These two are part of a series. So the first one is The Wolf Den. The time frame is in Pompeii. That was actually a big motivator for me because those olden times, anything historical, even if it's nonfiction, I am fascinated by those times, so I definitely wanna read about it. And then this is the sequel to that book, but these were actually both very good. I really, really enjoyed them. So she has a third book coming out next year that completes the series. Here we have a book by Jennifer Grey. I am actually a little surprised that I decided to buy it and read it because she's not an actress I'm very familiar with. And I actually never watched Journey Dancing until this year. I loved it though, by the way, but I was not familiar with her. So when she started promoting her book, I don't know why I decided to read it. Honestly, I think it's one of the weaker autobios that I've read. Didn't really care that much about it afterwards. We have Brave by Rose McGowan, The Rural Diaries by Hilary Burton Morgan. So. This one was a little bit of a random buy also because this actress, she's from One Tree Hill. That's all I know her from. She's not one of those actresses I really care much about, but this book was about her farm life. And I just wanted to hear and like learn about what her experience was like because I wouldn't say it's my dream, but it's definitely my preference to live further away from people and have land and, um, I guess, I don't know if farm kind of suits that, but it still fascinated me. I have a book here by Sharon Stone. I have Melinda Gates's book. I have this book, The Tiger's Wife by Taya Obrecht. So this book I found on the same uh, prize that Song of Achilles was offered, which is the main reason I decided to read it. Fortunately, didn't really enjoy it. Okay. Lastly, we have this lower row, which I am almost done filling out. Falcon's Eyes. This is one that I've read recently that I really, really liked. This is one of the ones that I found at Barnes & Noble, and it stuck out to me because it said a novel of Eleanor of Aquitaine. And based on the picture, I was like, oh, this seems like something during those uh, olden times that would fascinate me. But also Eleanor of Aquitaine was someone, a name I had never heard of. I didn't learn about her at school. So I wanted to hopefully learn about her from reading this book. So although I'd say you learn about her a little bit, but not in the way that I was hoping, in the, w in the way where she most likely would need to be a main character and you would learn about her life through that way. But she was more of a very... Ah, minor character. She didn't show up until like halfway into the book. And um, 
yeah, she's just not present very often. But I still really enjoyed this book. This is one of the largest books that I've read. Usually most of the ones that I choose are around like 350 to 400 page range. I tend to leave books that I haven't finished reading yet flat like this. So this is Sea of Tranquility. It is the same author as Station Eleven that I talked about previously. And I also read another one of her books, Glass Hotel, recently, which this one wasn't a fan, uh, but I will definitely give this book a chance. I might, well, maybe I will give it a chance next, depending. But um, there's another book by Celeste Ng. She wrote a very popular book called Little Fires Everywhere that I'm intrigued by. And she also came out with a new book recently that um, I'm interested in. It's called Our Missing Hearts, I believe. So my last book was this one, Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, some of my books I have definitely gotten from Reese Witherspoon's book club. So she puts out a book every single month that she recommends. And I believe it is either um, a woman as the main character or it's a female author. I don't know necessarily what her specific rules are, <clears throat> but this book is about a fictional rock band and it's told in a interview style format, which I thought was pretty interesting, but I devoured this in like one to two days. So definitely enjoyed it. I also recently watched The Last Dance with Michael Jordan. So I have gotten into a bit of a basketball phase now. I actually have the Maverick scheme on right now. It's at halftime. But after watching Hustle, the movie with Adam Sandler, I was like, why have I not been playing basketball? It is one of my favorite sports. I played a ton of basketball when I was a kid. I was on the middle school team and I just enjoy it. So I started um, getting sessions of coaching for basketball. And I went to some games recently. I went to see the um, Phoenix Suns uh, versus the Mavericks over in Phoenix. I stayed for two nights, drove over. And then I went to see Clippers versus the Suns up in LA. And I would honestly go to more if they were in San Diego. I don't like going to LA and Phoenix is far. So I'm really bummed about that, honestly. But anyways, I watched The Last Dance. And I guess shortly after that came out, Scottie Pippen came out with his own book. I was just kind of curious about this. I wanted to read about his account. Although I would say this book was kind of boring. I actually felt like he was basically recapping the documentary in terms of describing what happened during the games. But of course, his account of things, that's always nice to read about. That's pretty much why I decided I wanted to read it because he, based on how I felt watching the documentary, he seemed like a phenomenal basketball player. It just sucked that he was constantly overshadowed by Jordan. And I understand Jordan is incredible. And uh, in the beginning of watching that documentary, I was just like in awe and wishing that uh, I was able to attend games during that time or even watch them on TV. But that was just not a this book actually, Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister, is a very, very good mystery thriller, I guess. It has to do with time, what's, it has to do with like time travel-ish. Well, maybe time travel is the wrong word, but basically she witnesses something and then she finds herself going backwards in time, reliving previous days, and um, I don't want to spoil anything more than that, but this was a pretty good read. I was impressed by it. So I read this while I was on my trip. I went to Arlington recently for the Dota 2 Major and uh, read this one pretty quickly during that. So I have two books by the paleontologist Steve Broussat. One is about mammals and one is about dinosaurs. And I learned about him on the Armchair Expert podcast while I was driving to Arlington. So that was a pretty far drive, about 20 hours. I needed to drive nine to 10 hours a day. So podcasts for me is better than music because when you're listening to conversations, I feel like it allows you to feel more immersed and perhaps you'll not be as like dazed while driving straight for so long. Um, music doesn't really do that for me though, but when you're following a conversation and you're engaged in what they're talking about and 
maybe learning something. Anyways, I just enjoy learning and um, I don't know much about dinosaurs and even mammals and the thought of evolution can still feel crazy to me because when you're reading these books and they talk about millions of years of time, that seems like a small time frame when they talk about it because when they, in the grand scheme of things, it's like hundreds of millions of years. But sometimes when they just mention short time frames where things have changed gradually, 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 I don't know, all of that is just really crazy to me. Even thinking about whales, whales used to be on land and then just slowly over time, their limbs just went away. <laughs> I will say though, when it comes to nonfiction books, I've realized is I can't read them just back to back to back. Um, of course, I think a story is always best in terms of having that really eager motivation to continue reading, but also it depends on the person, right? So um, some people, if they really love silence, if they really love dinosaurs or whatever, they will be really excited to read it all the time and they're immersed and they're just super motivated. But I think for me, even though I think the information is interesting, um, stories, and wanting to know what find, happens next, that kind of draws me in more. And with nonfiction, there's not really, a, oh, I wonder what's gonna happen next kind of thing. You kind of generally know. So actually right now I'm reading about Julius Caesar. And even though for him, I don't really know what happens next for the most part, because I don't know anything about him. That's why I'm reading about him. But you know what I mean? Stories have that pull versus nonfiction. At least it does for me. Earlier, I talked about mythological fiction, and that was the genre I stuck with for the first several books that I read. So these books by Jennifer Saint, Electra, and Ariadne, um, <laughs> I would just see them in Barnes and & Noble, and they would have phrases like, if you liked Madeline Miller's Circe and the Song of Achilles, you'll love this book. And I was like, mm, all right, I will trust you if you say that. So both of these... I definitely enjoyed, although of course you can't expect to like every single character you read about. So sometimes the character might show traits I'm just like not fond of, but of course the story and the way it's written is still very good. So I definitely enjoyed both of these and I'm just happy that there's these mythological fiction, sorry, Greek mythology. <laughs> I should say that instead of mythological. I'm just glad there's these Greek mythological fiction writers that do it very well and um, they do tend to focus on the female characters. So for example, there's always certain characters that are briefly mentioned, but you don't know much about it other than what's offered. One of the characters, Agamemnon, he was the king of... <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I know things very, very well. I already forget. Is it Sparta? No, that is his brother. Oh God. Okay, let's not trivia for me, but um, I'm good with names. Sometimes when it comes to like all the characteristics of people, I'm not very good about it. But anyways, he was in the movie Troy. He was played by Brian Cox. <laughs> That's the stuff I know. But um, Agamemnon has always been portrayed as just a horrible, terrible person. He has immense pride and he does not like to kind of like feel inferior to anybody. So during the Trojan War, he clashed a lot with Achilles because Achilles doesn't want to take orders from anybody, but he is also the greatest fighter. So him and Agamemnon just always had issues. But anyways, there was always like a tiny excerpt. I don't remember where I read it from, but it would just casually mention that Clytemnestra, his wife, murdered him when he came home. Uh, my recollection was something along the lines of she axed him while he was in the bathroom, maybe coming out of the bathtub or whatever, but that's all I ever knew about her. But the thing is, when you read that, you're like, oh, she seems like, why the fuck would she do that? But when you actually have people writing about it from the character's point of view, it's so much more powerful. So the reason she did that is because while they were sailing on the way to Troy, they were camping out at um, one of the islands or something, and there was no wind to carry them across the ocean. So 
Agamemnon decided to use his daughter, his oldest daughter, as sacrifice, but he tricked them. He tricked his daughter and his wife, Clytemnestra, telling them that he wanted her to get married to Achilles. So they sailed over, and then pretty much in front of the entire army, he slit her throat and just dropped her body, offered her to the gods for some wind to carry them to the war. So Clytemnestra was just forever deeply affected by that. Like that's not really something I feel you can move on from very, very well. So this book was actually a little bit difficult to read at times because it's from different point of views of either like her other daughter. And um, th I just think uh, it offers really nice history and backstory of characters that you might not be as familiar with. So I just, I really enjoy Greek mythology. I think it's really fascinating. And um, yeah, I look forward to reading more of them. These are the books that I have read so far. It's funny, when I first started reading at first, I was like, oh my God, how am I? I was just thinking, oh my God, how am I gonna juggle everything? Because I'd say for like the past 10 years, I have fixated a lot on making sure Making sure it sounds like the wrong word, but I fixated a lot on watching movies, um, whether it's as often as possible. Sometimes if I have the ability to and I have a movie I'm motivated to watch, then it might be I'm watching a movie every day. And after all of that time, I have watched a lot of movies. And sometimes nowadays, it's not easy to find a new movie that I have not seen that I'm very motivated to watch. So I kind of feel like I'm in somewhat of a transitional period. I mean, there's always going to be new movies for me to find and watch, but um, I kind of view it as like books now might be that new thing that I discover because I've already seen a shitload of movies, but for books, I haven't read very much and there's so much of that world to discover. So, um, I'm really excited about it and I just feel really glad that I've picked it up because it sounds silly, but I get excited when I think about going somewhere to eat and reading. I have done that a lot for the past year, really. Um, I just pretty much go somewhere to dine in and I bring my book and I read before my food gets there or I read once my food is there and I feel like I'm just like in my own little world enjoying myself but I like that a lot plus if I bring my book everywhere also if I happen to be waiting I feel less agitated because I get to read which is not a downside and I would rather read than stare at my phone personally so yeah just felt like creating a video just talking about it because it has become something that I've uh, really immersed myself in lately. So hope you enjoyed it.